And now, from Pasadena, it's CCN Sunrise with Sunita Joshua Madison, Paulo Alejandria, the Crown City News team, and the CCN Sunrise segment stars. It's time to wake up San Gabriel Valley with CCN Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for watching CCN Sunrise. This morning, we'll be talking about domestic violence in light of the Ray Rice video released by TMZ Sports this week. I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. And I'm Paulo Alejandria. A few weeks ago, Jimmy Dore joined us from the left side of the political spectrum. Today, Tea Party Patriots founder and president Mike Alexander joins us from the right. It's pretty early, but things are already starting to heat up outside as far as the weather goes. It's pretty nuts, huh? I know. You know what? I'm, I'm one to never complain about warm weather. It's the whole reason I moved to Southern California. But I got to be honest, during the fall, especially September, is when I kind of miss the fall weather, getting a little cooler, enough to wear a sweatshirt. Yeah, so. I'm looking, I was looking forward to the fall, but I guess this is summer's last hurrah. Y you know, you can't, uh, you know, for another chance to get to the beach, I, I'm not going to. That's not that. necessarily a bad thing. No, and you know there are going to be cooling centers because it's going to get up to about a hundred. Um, I know Temple City has a cooling center at Live Oak Park, and there's a number of cooling stations. So definitely check out your local area to see that. Make sure you stay cool and hydrated. Well, there's a lot going on besides the weather, and we'll tell you all about that, especially locally. Now, here's a look at some of the headlines making news right here in the San Gabriel Valley. And now, CCN, Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood, starts right now. Celerity Exit Charter School closes abruptly, leaving parents scrambling to find a school for their children. CCN's Tony Mead has a story. Hi everybody, I'm Tony Mead. After last week's closing of Celerity Exit Charter School by the Pasadena Fire Department, Pasadena families of almost 300 students who attended the school still want answers. Even after we had the fire marshal come out and everything they claimed that it would take three to six months to do, we did it in days and they still weren't satisfied. They still continued to close us down. Parents met with Pasadena Unified School District officials Tuesday, September 9th at Cleveland Elementary to find out where to send their kids after Celerity Exit closes doors on August 26th, Pasadena Fire Marshals gave notice that students and staff must vacate the school, located at the William Carey University site after the school year began. The notice to vacate came after a call from a concerned parent prompting the fire department to investigate. Pasadena Unified School District Communications Director Adam Wolfson says several safety violations at the school needed correcting. You didn't have fire alarms. You didn't have um, uh, fire sprinklers. So safety is paramount. It wasn't the district who called it in. It was a parent who was concerned about their child's safety and called the fire department about it. PUSD officials claim they sent letters to Celerity starting back in December 2013, and Celerity claims they never received any documents requesting them to conform to the safety codes. Celerity Educational Group CEO Velka McFarlane responded September 4th that the charter school would comply after receiving notice to vacate the property. Many Celerity students and parents came to the meeting to voice their frustrations to PUSD Interim Superintendent Brian McDonald, but school staff members said he was sick and unable to attend the meeting. Some parents said that that made them angry and feeling like their questions and concerns were not being addressed. We promised the superintendent inviting us. That was the parents' expectation. He was not even here. How well he cares about our kids is... It shows that, especially his people walking out of meetings and not even hearing what we're trying to say. Some of the students will attend other celerity charter schools located in Eagle Rock, Highland Park, and in the San Fernando Valley. PUSD board member Tyrone Hampton said about 20 families from Celerity have already contacted the district to transfer their students. Up to this point, I believe I have enrolled 20, which is not near the amount, of, you know, compared to 300. The meeting today got a little heated, and now parents will have to decide whether their children will attend another Pasadena Unified School District, private schools, or even another charter school. In Pasadena, Tony Mead, CCM. It was a night of celebration for hundreds of San Gabriel Valley residents and business executives during the awards gala at the Homestead Museum in the City of Industry. CCN's own Sunita Joshua Madison and Tammy Devine attended the event. After a hearty meal and video presentation, the evening's honorees received their awards. The winners included Business of the Year Pro Lacta Bioscience, which collects human milk for preemies. The Business Entrepreneur Award went to Hai Fung Foods, maker of the famous Sriracha Hot Sauce. And the Green Business Award went to Foothill Transit, a Crown City News sponsor for their electric buses. 
The award tonight is is really a, a, a huge honor, and it's um, uh, it's a reflection of the, our commitment to the environment, our commitment to sustainability, and all of the things that we do. Well, it's nice to. Uh recognize Wayne Rakovich. He's done so much for so long. And the other organizations, when you listen to their bios, what they've done, it's truly some incredible things. Other honorees included developer Wayne Ratkovich, who won the Chairman's Award, Cal Poly Pomona took home the Excellence in Education Award, and Supervisor Gloria Molina won the Public Service Award. Well, we brought you the left side of the sp political spectrum with Jimmy Dore, and now we have the right side of the political spectrum with Tea Party co-founder and president Mike Alexander from our local Tea Party here, TPAC. Nice to have you here, Mike. It's good to see you and both of you, especially uh, you, Sunita, and Paulo. Uh, you and I have done a couple of interviews together. Yeah, yeah. well, we're going to jump right into it. The big news yeah. of this week, um, President Obama made the speech uh, this week talking about ISIS and our strategy. Do you, do you think it's a strong enough st strategy? Well, he acknowledged himself he doesn't have a strategy. <laughs> that was you know, last so, week. Well, yeah, I'm not sure Turn he still has one. <laughs> you know, this morning we're treated to Mr. Kerry. He says there's no reason for war fever. Uh, we have a situation in the United States where 12 years post, uh, or what, 13 years post uh, 2011, we're still having trouble defining uh, the enemy. Mr. Uh, Obama to the extent that he had a strategy at all, and it's hard for us to see where, where it came to foreign affairs, uh, has, uh, ha has focused on trying to find a path of understanding with the Muslim uh, elements. If I can stop, if I can stop yeah. you there, sir. Um, something that I found interesting, and a lot of yeah. other pundits found interesting, is that when it comes to ISIL, he, he does not want to designate them as a solely Islamic group, even if the members are seem to be carrying the Islamic flag. What was your takeaway from this? Well, it's all a complete denial of common sense, is it not? What but why, everybody though? knows. Well, well, the fact of the matter is, I mean, these are, because he's trying, the only way we can win in the Middle East, which we haven't figured out, is that we need to get the Middle East players on board in fighting it. And that's exactly what his strategy is. That's oh. why we're not leading in this, this session. <laughs> we're we're and, making sure and, it's a uh, What, nas what national security meeting were you in on? I mean, this is mere assertion. You know, we no, have, but we have, we <clears> failed. <throat> in Afghanistan, you know, even the, the, um, the Russians went in there, we armed the other side. And what did they do? They turned on us. And that's what's happening with ISIS. Mr. And the ISIS is um, a Ob backlash from the Bush strategy of well, messing up the Middle East and Iraq in the first place. Clear nonsense. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Obama is the one who's been in charge. He, you know, the CIA, hold it, don't jump me now. Let me finish <laughs> this point. Yeah, well, we're keeping it very cordial. He is the commander in chief for Absolutely. six years now. Absolutely. The Afghanistan war is Mr. Obama's war. The Iraq situation. He, oh, no, 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 you're interrupting again. Okay, Let me finish right the ahead, point, then right jump. Ahead. And the situation in Iraq and the whole war on the non terrorism, quote unquote, is his policy whether he's carried it out or whatever, it is the absolute epitome of irresponsibility at this point for anybody who claims to be the commander in chief to speak of Bush's war, and I won't I'm not talking it. about Bush's war. You just what did. I, what I'm talking about is people like John McCain coming around, finger pointing, yes. and, and when, yes, it is, a, uh, Obama is in charge, he's commander in chief, President Obama is, but because of our Iraqi policy, the way we started this war in the first place, this is we're suffering from the backlash of, of the mess and the chaos we created right. you're saying from this years. war no I'm not you're, saying you're, you're, I'm saying he's in charge but we are suffering from the backlash of the chaos we cr this, created in this Iraq is, in the first place and is, that was Bush this is a childish and immature approach to a very very serious matter in absolutely this so what we're would looking, be better instead of finger at, pointing would be actually for the two parties to come together and and have a joint solution and have a, a united front for the enemies but you know that's not what the Republicans want to do well but this you're, you're this this is right out of the out of the propaganda book and your your performance here this morning is an excellent audition for the non spokesman for the White House. When do we ever stop as adults to stop? I'm asking you I'm to asking stop. You. The, the, I'm no, asking I'm you. I'm asking you to, to stop, stop doing the finger pointing. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm that's not exactly. Yeah, you are. What I want to do you're, is, you're, is you're, you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing the left always does. I'm not the left. 
Well, oh, you're you're far enough to be there. I, I'm yeah, this is the okay. you let's are have repeating. Let's a real conversation. Well, I'm the, saying uh, 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 when you say that you know yeah. that uh, he's immature. I mean, come on. Let's have uh, let's have a real conversation. He is okay. the commander in chief. Correct. He says. Okay. You say. So what do you, what have, do you want me to do? Have, what do you have? A are problem? we having a conversation right. or am I taking dictation? What problem do you have with the policy? Huh? What problem do you have with the strategy he laid out this week? All right. First of all. The, uh, and it's very, very difficult to deal with this on, on a uh, on a coffee slurping Monday uh, morning TV or morning show. Okay, this is a hard context. Absolutely. To so, take it on. So, what okay. do you have problem with his speech? Yeah. Oh, uh, first of all, I didn't listen to it because it okay, hardly matters. That's usually what people on the yeah. right do. They don't listen. No. And, no but no, they no. have a lot to say. So much to say without listening. All right. Your next point. So what yeah, problem something did you we have? can't have a conversation about. What problem did you have given that you didn't listen to the speech? All right. I don't care about a speech. Let's look at the overall policy. There is a policy uh, uh, in place. Do we or do we not have an is international Islamic threat? Can you and I start off an agreement on that? Yes or no? Yes, I believe we do have an international Islamic threat. Uh, uh, Very good. We do have a counterterrorism. Do you think that we have a national security problem, therefore? Yes We've or no? We've had a national security problem for a very long time. That's Baby steps not, now. That's Baby not steps. an argument. Well, no, 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 no. You're, what you're trying to do is to avoid the trap before I've said okay. it. Okay. So I, I, you guys can go on and on about this, but we are <laughs> right. going to have to wrap. We'll, we'll see <laughs> you this can't answer the question. Yeah. 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 Like, it's, really it's a long answer. answer. Guys, yeah. <laughs> Very well, fascinating. Really what happened, but you know what? We always like having you on the show. So Am I gone already? Well, you know, no, you're coming back. <laughs> we extended the conversation. We will All have right. you back in our second buzz. The Ray Rice domestic violence scandal has started a national conversation after the video of Rice's knockout punch. In her family family segment, Dr. Michelle Meyer talks about why women stay in violent relationships when we come back. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And now, CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood, starts right now. The Ray Rice knockout punch in a Vegas elevator left a lot of people wondering how Janae Rice could stay in the relationship. Dr. Michelle Meyer joins us to talk about what makes victims stay in abusive relationships. Now a lot of people just can't fathom why Janae Absolutely. Rice would stay in an abusive relationship, but there might be some explanations as yes. to why this is, correct? You know, I have to tell you, I'm reading constant feeds and posts, and it's making me really sad because no one really knows her story, and it's really unfortunate. So now, you know, reason why individuals typically do stay in these abusive relationships is social role expectations, cultural expectations. Sometimes abuse is generational, and so individuals have been exposed to abuse growing up, and so they kind of become accustomed to it. And I'm not saying that it's correct, but it becomes their sort of sense of normal. Another reason why individuals stay, excuse me, is fear of safety. Fear of safety for themselves, fear of safety for their children, and fear of safety for the individuals that are there supporting them. Another reason that individuals stay, unfortunately, is financial means. Sometimes if they report their perpetrator, what happens is there's legal ramification and sometimes deportation, and then who's gonna support the family when that individual was the breadwinner? 
Another reason why, and I think I feel like this with Janae Rice, is that there is that hope. There is that hope that the individual will change and that things will get better. So what can we do to help? First of all, the very most important thing to do is let someone know that you are concerned for their safety. Acknowledge that it is both difficult and scary. Be supportive and do not judge. This will continue to decrease an individual's sense of self-worth and feel more devalued, which is, I think, what, which is what we're seeing with Janae Rice right now, is that on one end, she is a victim of abuse, but now she's hearing all these messages about her being weak and her being unable to do things for herself. Another thing is develop a safety plan. You know, develop a safety plan for the individual that they can call or go to when something comes up. You know, and last but not least, encourage individuals to seek out services that offer additional help and guidance. You know, when it's someone we have a personal connection to, we always want to do our best. So what we actually really can do is serve as good role models, be supportive, do not judge, and help people find safety. You know, acknowledge that it's difficult to lead this type of relationship, but just really being present is the most important thing. And I think and I'm hoping that Janae Rice has her support system that's really helping her with some of this. Now, when, when, I, when I think about this, I, I'm kind of reminded by the Stockholm Syndrome with, with hostages. Yes. And you can kind of look at these women as hostages. Yes in these relationships, is that, a, is that a correct Yeah, I mean, and think about it, if you've been in a relationship for so long and you're being abused, your sense of self is, is not there. You feel devalued as a human, and so it just perpetuates and you stay, and it, it makes sense. It, I don't agree with it, but it makes sense. I just have to ask really quickly, can he be re rehabilitated? I, I do think so, is but that I do an think option? it's something that will take a very, very long time. All right, well, yes. thank you so much, and it uh, certainly needs a lot longer than we've given it. But Pasadena's Robinson Park renovation project is moving fa uh, forward after community feedback. Ron Carter is up next to tell us what's in the works. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The Robinson Park renovation project has moved into phase two. Renovations will soon take place on the recreation center. And Ron Carter with the, the Carter Agency joins us to tell us all about it. And he brought a visual aid along too. So, so Ron, how did you get involved with this project? Well, uh, we partnered with uh, GKK Works. GKK Works is the architecture and design firm that is actually going to be working on the design of what the, the center is going to, not the center, but the, the park structure is going to look like and uh, that's all we got involved you know we're one of their partners and uh, you know we're the team that's working to bring this project to fruition how long have the uh, renovations been in the planning stages well uh, there's been we have been working on this project since I would say April March we've been in meetings since March and work actually started in April our work started in April where we went out and engaged the community in attending the meetings to get their feedback on what the structure should look like and what, what what's some of that feedback that you've been getting oh well you know we got feedback that uh, yes the building need uh, 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 renovation. Uh, they, some people needed a bigger space to uh, have uh, uh, the, the workout sessions. Uh, they needed a bigger kitchen. Uh, they needed uh, the. We got a lot of feedback about the gym. People had different thoughts about the gym, about the physical exercise area, uh, those kind of things. And then there was some concern about the safety. A lot of people felt that the park was not uh, uh, safe. Uh, but uh, we're kind of working through all those things, and this is the model what the park is uh, hopefully will look like uh, once uh, the structure is put up. You know, the, the, the building is going to look somewhat like 
like this. We've been having meetings uh, every month with the community. They've come out and let us know what they'd like to see. And the designers has been taking in all of that information, consolidated. Can you take us through some of the renovations? Like, what's yeah, going to be different? What was existing? What's new? Well, there are going to be about 10,000 uh, 10, square feet of new, uh, of new building there. Uh, you, you know, the, the pool is area is right going to change pool. right okay. there. The pool area That's is going to change. That's a nice pool. Good yes. size. Uh, the gym. Uh, this is the gym. Uh, it's put, the, the parts of the gym is with the it, basketball and right and new equipment as well. A new, hopefully, uh -huh. uh, yes. Uh, and then this is the, this is the structure here that we're really focusing on. This is the structure that that is really going to change. That's the main part of the building. And there'll be lots of different things in this building. Uh, one of the things that 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 I think is going to happen is you'll see, you know, the, the area would become more multi-purpose mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things happening at Robinson Park that uh, I guess uh, people are not aware of. So the there. building adjacent to Fair Oaks Avenue is going to see the right, most renovations. Right, exactly, exactly. And then there's some consideration about putting, you know, an extra uh, part here on the front of the gym. So we don't know yet. We're still working through uh, that. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got a lot of feedback from the community, so there's been a good yeah. amount of excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of feedback, and one of the beautiful things about working on this project was that it really gave me and my staff and my team the opportunity to actually go out into the community and talk to people. And we have been knocking on doors uh, this summer. One of the, uh, I think for me, for my business, one of the most uh, 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 beneficial thing and the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that we were able to hire over 60 kids this summer to actually help us. There's, the kids has been our street team, they've been helping us with the marketing, going, knocking on doors, taking surveys and everything else. So, you know, we're pretty happy about that. All right. Well, it looks like a fantastic project and really something that the community is going to use and congregate and come together around. Yeah. So we yeah. are and really happy And what's the target date? I'm sorry for, for all the renovations to be finished. Uh, the, all around the target date is probably around 2016, 2017, because once this process is over, then they're going to the design phase and uh, not the design phase, but the, uh, the the building stage, and that's going to take about Excellent. a year and a half. We look forward to that. Yes, sure. Thanks, Ron, Thank for being here. Uh -huh. Can a robot do your job better than you? Many businesses think so. CCN Sunrise's Money and Market segment star Bob McClure explains. And Solomon Curvin has LaSalle High School Volleyball in Sunrise Sports coming up next. all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. <laughs> A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. LaSalle High School volleyball players are two-time defending champs. CCN Sunrise sports reporter Solomon Curvin talked to senior setter Alyssa Tavera, who some say is the glue that holds the team together. Hi, I'm here at LaSalle High School here to talk with star volleyball player Alyssa Tavera about their upcoming season. Alyssa, you guys are two-time defending state champions. What is it going to take to three-peat? Um, we definitely have to figure out what we need to do because we have a lot of new players this year, but I think if we just work hard, we'll get there. As a senior, what do you feel like your responsibilities are to this team? Uh, I think my responsibility is just to have the girls work hard every single day they come to practice and just play our hearts out every single game. What do you feel like have been your most valuable lessons you've learned as your four years here? Um, definitely commitment and dedication and to work as a team and play as one. You've been recently been recruited by a few colleges. Could you name us a few and are you leaning towards one or any special ones? Um, I've been recruited by UC San Diego and Cal Lutheran and I'm just keeping my options open right now. Great. Well, we wish the Lancers luck on their roles to 3 peeing as CIF state champions. At LaSalle High School, 
Solomon Curvin, CCN. Manufacturing companies are creating more jobs. Too bad most of them are going to robots. In his Money and Markets segment, CCN's Bob McClure talks about the troubling trend making it harder for workers to find high-wage jobs. Yeah, you're right. It is a little more difficult for U.S. workers to find those high-wage jobs. And the thing is, it's a difficult answer as to why is this happening. So what I did was I went and actually looked at the, the uh, just released Harvard Business School report on U.S. business competitiveness. And this report is out every year. It's authored by uh, Dr. Michael Porter. Now, if you've been a student in one of my entrepreneurial finance classes at Cal Poly Pomona, it, I should say, if you pass my entrepreneurial finance class at Cal Poly Pomona, you know all about Dr. Michael Porter and his take on U.S. competitiveness and what we need to do as a country to stay competitive. What I'd like to do this morning is look at just a couple of the elements that came out of that report, and then we can talk about the high-wage jobs. First of all, one of the most noted parts of the, the survey showed that 47% of business owners in the United States felt that the United States was falling in competitiveness. And that's a pretty difficult number to look at and say, wow, we're one of the best industrial countries in the world, and yet 47% of our business owners think we're falling in competitiveness. But if we go back and look over the last two years' reports, we say two years ago that number was at 71%, then it was at 58%, now 47 So while people think that we're falling in competitiveness, that number is declining. So that trend is generally positive. Now, the question about high-wage jobs has a lot to do with education and how well informed the workers or how well trained the, the employees are or potential employees are going into the workplace. So I look, and this is a very large part of this report. So what I took a look at was a question that was asked of school superintendents and business owners. And the question was, how well informed are the business owners as to what's going on in the public schools? It turns out that the School superintendents said that of the business owners who they've spoken with, about 3% of them are really well informed as to what's going on in the public schools. When the business owners themselves were asked, how well informed are you about what goes on in public schools, 35% of them said they're very well informed. And you can see from these two charts that there's quite a disparity between what the business owners think they know and what the school superintendents say they know. So, as far as workers getting out of the workplace or of the school and going into the workplace, they need to kind of meet with the business owners and, and get on common ground. I think once they can do that a little better, we'll have a much better informed and better educated workforce. Guys, back to you. Uh, do you see these collaborations happening more with the, the schools and businesses? Are, are those opportunities happening? They're starting to happen. Uh, they happen at the university level fairly regularly. They're just now starting to happen at the, the high school level. All I right. guess it is the future. I hope we don't turn into robots, Bob. Thanks. <laughs> In our second half hour, Mike Alexander from TPAC joins us again on The Buzz we, right here on CCN Sunrise. We have lots more for you when we come back, so don't go away. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. 
Real help, real answers, right now. And now, from Pasadena, it's CCN Sunrise with Sunita Joshua Madison, Paulo Alejandria, the Crown City News Team, and the CCN Sunrise Segment Stars. It's time to wake up San Gabriel Valley with CCN Sunrise. We're back with our second half hour of CCN Sunrise. I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. And I'm Paulo Alejandria. So there's an article out there, Paul, that um, it's talking about what parents did way back when that probably would get them arrested. I know, and what I found very interesting, and I actually can relate to this, actually my cousin, who I won't name by name, his, the, the way his parents showed him love was by feeding him, and I'm talking about like excessively feeding him. Like by the time he was like eight years old, he was like eating adult-sized portions. By the time he was 12, I think he was already maxing out about 200 pounds. Oh boy. So. Um, Needless to say, you know, kids being cruel, Aww, it was a little rougher. He would tell me, he would tell me, like, yeah, it was a little rougher. And as his cousin, I don't think I was any better because I used to call him the nutty professor. But that, that's, an <laughs> that's another it, thing. It, I hope anyway, you give him lots of love now. Anyway, like, the principal of his school, like, brought it up to his parents. And his mother was shocked. He's like, what's the matter? This is how I, this is how I show my kid love. You know, if he likes to eat, he I want to feed him. very well loved. So... Uh, to make a long story short, by the time he was 17, he already had the early stages of diabetes. Oh my gosh. So it was only then that he, you know, he decided to make a change. He even had to go through some hypnotism to because kind of, he developed oh, wow. a real big dependency on food, like a comfort. Well, you know, um, you know, I think arrested is too far, but people are wondering, like, you know, are we becoming a nanny state by pointing it out? But you know, good for the the his principal for pointing it out to your to his yeah, mom because that, they obviously didn't know. Yeah, and at that time, you know, things like childhood obesity, I don't think it was in the popular vernacular. So. They took it like as an offense. But so now that yeah. we know, you know, like it, it is important that we do something about it. Like this, you know, my dad used to smoke in the car all yeah, the time. Yeah, mine too. Um, I hated it, and I didn't have a choice, you know. Mm -hmm. And until I got older, oh, to say, I want to be walking. I, exactly, and I did not want to do <laughs> no, that. <not> <laughs> I was too busy, busy eating Cheetos. Exactly. <laughs> Here's some of the headlines making news right here in the San Gabriel Valley. And now, CCN, Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood, starts right now. Wish your iPhone battery would last a lot longer? Then you might be waiting in line to get your new iPhone 6. Apple launched its iPhone 6 this past week along with its iPhone 6 Plus, a larger version, and its new smartwatch. The products will be released first through pre-orders, which started at midnight today, September 12th. Then a week later, they'll launch the products in 10 markets, including the US, UK, Canada, France, and Germany. The week after that, they'll be available in 18 more markets, including New Zealand, Ireland, and Russia. Apple officials announced iPhone 6 will be available in 115 countries by the end of the year. For you carnivores out there, a new Pasadena restaurant has meat, meat, and more meat. And free meat for a year for some lucky folks. CCN's Andy Rocco has the story. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Rocco and we are here at the grand opening of Meat District Company where the first 100 customers will receive a free burger once a week for the next year. Let's talk to Fallon Gomez about all the burger buzz. Hi, can you tell us a little bit about the Cleaver Club and what to expect from that? Yeah, so with the Cleaver Club, it's a loyalty for our loyal obviously, and what happens for the first 100 customers today, we are allowing them to get a burger a week for a year. This is our first restaurant in um, Pasadena, in LA actually, so we have 14 restaurants back home in Australia. And um, we wanted to do something to put us on the map. Can you tell me a little bit, what do you think about the outcome today? It's amazing. I um, left here at 1 o'clock in the morning and the line was already halfway down the street. And then I got back here at 6.30 and it was around the corner. Is there anything unusual on the menu? Special. Yeah, so um, the uniqueness of our menu is actually that we age all our beef in-house for a minimum of 21 days. All our beef is through the Never Ever program, um, so it's organic, um, it's grass-fed and then grain-finished. And on our menu we have a variety of steaks, um, burgers, pork is our speciality, so it's actually a hanging kebab. And um, then we have ribs, so we have half-wrapped wrap. We're open now, so come on down and try us out. All right. 
Wonderful, you heard it? Come on down and try all the burgers. In Pasadena, Andy Rocco, CCN. And we're back for round two. I mean, our second morning buzz. <laughs> ding, ding. And we're going to be discussing classy. the punch everybody seems to be talking about in that Las Vegas casino. So, Mike, yeah. well, let's, uh, I'm sure you're, you're well aware of what's going on with Ray yeah. Rice. Yeah. What are some takeaways you have so far with what's going on? Oh, gosh. You know, this is an, a, a political issue. I'm, you know, as I was raised, and I think most uh, uh, guys are raised, you never touch a woman in anger. That's For one thing any, you guys can agree on. Any. Yes. <laughs> There's never an excuse to touch a girl or a woman uh, in anger, period. Mm -hmm. It's non-negotiable. There's a lot Mr. of questions that are being raised, uh, like Sunita brought up earlier. Yeah. There's a question of retribution. Can he redeem himself? Why, why would she choose to stay? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that happens every day. I, uh, yet I have dealt with battered spouses professionally. Uh, it is the most astonishing thing uh, 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 how much abuse women will take, but you know it happens for all kinds of reasons, uh, and it's not always a malady. There's some women who would take the punch for the money, mm. and, and you, I, I mean, it's it, it's a fact. You say, gosh, you got to get out of this so-called relationship. You got to go take care of yourself. What kind of an example are you setting for your daughter, for others? Well, what you know? do you think about as far as with the NFL's involvement in this? I mean, do you think Goodell should step down for the way he's handled this? Well, the question is, what's the justification for your involvement in it? And what do I mean by that? What we have here is an interesting situation where we pick out selectively a few people engaged in certain behavior, in this case spousal abuse, or in other case making racially inappropriate remarks, or whatever the case may be. You pick the new public crime, and then this gets involved. It was, stay I mean, with well, me here. There's an important point it, it, that I'm trying to make. Okay. You know, you get, this gets involved, and suddenly this matter is being made by a public court, and this is a private business, a private contractual arrangements are in place, and this guy, whatever it is he did, the new rule is is that the media gets to decide in the public well, as well, a group gets is, to decide. The thing is, he did it in public. It was a public space. So, you know, if it was done in the privacy of his home, unfortunately, you know, Meriwether made a you know horrible statement that majority of things don't get then, reported. He would There's, still have to answer for it if it was made public. It was, and, and, and his job would still be at risk. Which, yeah, I wonder if that's even fair. I mean, given like, okay, well, he does this in his personal life, but does that really affect what he does professionally? Because if he can't right. keep it on the field, then yes. I mean, but who would say that though? Right. Um, I think I mean, Janae, no, got, I mean, uh, Janae right. would say I mean, he okay, can't keep like, it on the field. Can he perform his duties as a football it player, as matter. an entertainer? Can he control himself to no. be disciplined? The real issue is here what is that what do. you're saying is that Sunita gets to uh. decide. Um, okay. No, no, no you know, actually, this the police should decide. The police should decide that it was a criminal matter. But that's really not what's happening here. Everybody, you just demanded that you said, should you raise the question? Should Goodell, an executive of a private business should he be booted out because he didn't handle it the way that you the media and we as the public feel that, that you see what I mean should have like yeah and yeah. this is a very it, very it slippery a, slope it's a serious it's a serious situation I mean, so I don't think we're micromanaging yeah. a small issue here oh, a big issue well, how about, but we do need to move on how about Hollywood and we are gonna move on I, and you're gonna love I, what we're gonna move on hey to. taxes <laughs> we're talking about you yay my favorite switch <laughs> okay so um, that, we got a little bit of a tax. Why don't you go in and tell us about that, uh, this tax revolt? Initiative. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the current effort of uh, TPAC, T E A P A C dot N E T, and the California Tax Limitation Committee, I'm the president uh, and one of the founders of, of each. Our current effort is to roll back the, le the expropriative level of taxation that we have in the United States by starting locally. And we're going after utility, user utility taxes. These are the taxes, ladies and gentlemen, that you pay on everything. If you look at your cell phone, you get a bunch of taxes. There. One of them is a city utility tax, your video. Uh, your local telephone, your uh, your data transmission, you name it. We're going after that. It's a lot of money, and, and we're using the local initiative process, basic grassroots democracy, to put these issues on the uh, on the table. And are the, I mean, you know, I know places like Arcadia don't want it on. <laughs> so, are you yeah. putting forth the initiatives that the the public really wants? 
Well, uh, how do we measure that, Sunita? Yeah, we measure that. Yeah, we, we do that the old fact, that voting thing. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we comply with the state of California uh, statute. We go out and get a number of qualified signatures equal to five percent of the number of people who voted for governor in the last race, and that then it goes to city council. Then they're supposed to put it up for a vote to the people. Well, then you, you get to say no. Yeah. Well, you know, you're in a in a pretty blue state here with California, uh, blue area. So you know, what do you see as as your results? You know, as far as you going out there in the public? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, you, you know, for example, uh, and just to bring your audience up to date, we uh, uh, we we did a, a test run of around five initiatives earlier in the year, and we qualified Arcadia. Arcadia has, uh, I believe, unlawfully refused to put it on the ballot. That's another matter we can discuss some other time. But the other four cities, we have since uh, re. Uh, re Refiled and now we're uh, yeah. and now we're now we're gathering. But let me tell you about Pasadena. Well, you right. know what? We would love to uh, let but, you. We're just gonna have to bring you back in because okay. there's we're a lot to talk about. In. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> but we do appreciate the fireworks this morning. Who needs coffee? Woke that, us right? up. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm your the, friend of the show. You're always back. She's the best. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for having me in. It's right. always a pleasure. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. In our senior solutions segment, Mary Winters uh, warns us about phone scammers. And the Mad Chef has a kale and white bean soup for when the weather gets a little bit cooler when we come back. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Seniors are sometimes easy prey for scammers, especially over the phone. In the CCN Sunrise Senior Solutions segment, Mary Winters is here to tell us about how seniors cannot become victims. Um, it's, so, it's so hard because so many of them fall prey to these scams that are out there. Right, they're lonely. And they're, and they're seen isolated. as an easy target. They're looked at as an easy target and oftentimes if there's some memory loss, there's a real opportunity to take advantage of somebody. So really the biggest threat to your wallet as a senior is a smooth talker on the other side of the phone who wants to empty that wallet. So let me talk about three of the most popular scams right now. Um, the lottery is still really big. People are calling to, to just funnel your money into their wallet for that one. And if you get a call from somebody from a lottery that is out of the country, that is actually illegal for them to solicit to you. It doesn't matter if they ask for a little money and you'll be getting more later. Absolutely illegal and absolutely a scam. 
Another popular one right now is what we call the granny jail scam. They call in the middle of the night, early in the morning, just to throw you off your feet a little bit and confuse you and say, we'll have a young man on the other side of the phone and say, Grandma, I need help. Do you know who this is? And of course, you'll say your grandson's name, Johnny, what are you doing? Well, Grandma, I'm in jail, and I, I'm, I need help. I'm in Mexico, and I need $2,000 wired to me. Please don't tell Mom and Dad. And then, uh, naturally, the heartstrings tug, and Grandma is running to the bank to transfer money for grandson. And you've given the name to them. The other one that's really big right now is the IRS fraud. The IRS does not call you, but what's happening is they're calling seniors or anybody really and saying your check did not clear that you wrote for your taxes, or they're saying that you you just you need to pay more money. So what happens is people write checks because they're afraid of the IRS. The IRS again does not call you. So how do we avoid these scams? Don't answer the phone or get phone with caller ID. I also give you permission to be rude to these people on the phone. You may hang up on them. Another great way is I also give you permission to tell a little white lie and pretend that you have a son or grandson who's a police officer and you have to run that idea past them. So please make sure that you are careful on the phone and never give your name, never give out money. Do you find oftentimes that these sort of crimes are not being reported? Oh, very often. Because they don't know better. They're yeah. embarrassed. Or they keep doing it because they don't realize it's a problem. I recently had a situation with a gentleman who, um, who was going to the neighbor. And he said, we need to give money to these people because of oh, whatever situation. It's so sad. And it wasn't it's until the neighbor intervened. that It's just heartbreaking. So thanks for bringing light to Thank that, you. Mary. Absolutely. Get ready for fall weather with your new favorite soup. The Mad Chef Dave Matthews makes a hearty kale and white bean soup next in the Taste of CCN Sunrise. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Well, the heat is currently on, but believe it or not, the weather will actually get cooler with fall coming in. The kind of weather perfect for a hearty soup. Chef Dave is here to cook up a white bean and kale soup and a salad with fall vegetables. How are you doing this morning, I'm Chef? I'm good. How are you? I'm so, awesome. I just wanna, so today, I just got back from Cleveland, and I just want to share some really fun recipes with you. So we're going to be doing this kale. Well, you guys are going to be doing this kale and white bean set soup um, and it's amazing so what you're going to do is i've already pre-cut this for you okay so this is the kale we're going to throw it right into the base of your soup but i will be doing some cutting though you actually will be doing some cutting because i need you to chop up i look some forward to it onions. every week i know so this goes to the at the bottom of this the soup. goes to the bottom of the soup ah, okay so kale is really high in protein it's it's got all the antioxidants that you need and it's just good for you so you cannot get enough Kale. Anything leafy and green, you want to eat a lot of. But sometimes it's hard to eat because it's it's really hearty. It is. And it is. That's why, um, that's why I chopped it up a little bit. And, smaller, and then the soup will and help. And the soup will help it. And there's actually kale in this. So when you when you make the soup, um, basically what I did, this soup has no oil, mm -hmm. no salt, 
Um, no refined sugars at What's all. What's the good stuff in it? Mm -hmm. It's all healthy. Okay. And, so, and I've heard that it's actually a good source of energy. Instead of drinking that cup of coffee, maybe a kale ca smoothie You know, or if something. you could do, the commitment that I gave was to do green leafy vegetables five times a day, the size of my fist. So breakfast, this morning I had some kale. For lunch, I'll have some kale. kale. This mm. afternoon, I'll have Brussels sprouts. I'll do something. Changing it up. Yeah, yeah. change it up a little bit. Uh, beet greens are also really good and healthy. Also beets, you can do beets. Um, even though it's red or golden, you can still use them as, um, mm, they kind of really count like towards kale. the, yes, I do love them. And what happens if you don't like love, love kale? Is it an acquired taste? It's is an acquired taste. And you know, when you try this just today, keep trying it. just be open because like I said, this has onions in it, so what you're going to do basically is saute onions in water, mm -hmm. which I didn't think would work. Huh, how yes. do you do that? You put a little bit of water in your pan and you finely chop up your onion and you throw it in the pan and you just cook them down until they're translucent. Okay. And it works. So no oil, just in no the water. No oil at all. So then once open you Open your mind, you can learn to love anything. Open your mind, <laughs> then, you throw in, then you throw in some chicken stock, or not chicken stock, vegetable stock. Now the thing with vegetable stock that you want to be careful about is the sodium, because vegetables have natural sodium in them they automatically, the stock is going to be salty. So buy unsalted or low, so, low sodium uh, stock. And, but that's for someone, I mean, you know, let's say for me, I don't need to worry about my so sodium intake as much. Do, can I put sodium in there or is this for you people? You can, you can, but you don't, you salt. actually don't need to. And today I brought some celery seed. I want you to try it. Okay. Um, it is a natural salt, really. You can grind it up, crush it, and you can use it as salt. She's That's seeing how far you're going to bend on this I whole am. thing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm really, she's on the really vegetables, but I'm a little concerned here. So this, this soup has, um, I put a, a sweet yam in here, so I diced it up. Okay. Then there's garbanzo beans and some white bean in here, and then some kale. And basically, that's it. You cook it for 45 minutes, and you've got a delicious. And I'd probably throw in some cayenne or something oh, in there. Oh, yes. Well, the spicing in this, the mm -hmm. spicing in this, it's got some ground uh, coriander. Okay. I put some Hungarian paprika in this, mm -hmm. so it'll be nice and um, a little bit sweet. And then I put some curry. Now, okay. as far as like the no oil, I mean, is that because you know they're they're talking about now how having fats is a good thing. So. Um, is there a reason well, to not use the oil? The reason that this doctor believes that one should not use um, oil is because oil damages um, a cell that's a, one of the cells that lines your blood vessels. Um, so when, every time you use oil, you're damaging a cell. But that's you're not true of cells. olive oil, is it? I've heard yeah, olive, olive oil, oil actually... too. I was shocked. Now olive you went to was... Cleveland, uh, it was uh, forks over knives, is that what you were? Yes, it was with uh, Dr. Esselstyn and his wife, Anne. And they, uh, he's a uh, heart surgeon. Uh, so he had a group of about 25 people who all were suffering from heart disease. Mm -hmm. So it was, the, it was teaching them new ways to eat and be healthy. Okay. So, yeah. And it's really telling your mind that you don't need to have processed sugar, you don't need to have those things. It's harder. It's Are you listening, mind? Do. I, don't, I don't know if it's listening, but okay, I Okay, so I want you guys to try this. <laughs> all right. Try this. And are, are those toppings that you put? Okay, yeah, this, is this garnish? This was the other salad that I made okay, for you guys well, to why try. Don't we try. Try this, this one first. Okay. I want you to try this first. Now, you can also add some hot sauce to this if you like. I sure would. Some, yeah, you, you can add some sriracha mm -hmm. to it if you like. All right, you, you, you've won me over. This is it's definitely hearty. It's, it's different, and I think when it, you know, when you first make mm. it and it's it's hot outside or cold outside, it's a really nice soup to have. Mm. All right, so what's the salad? Okay, you have so right barley. Here? Barley is really important. Um, it's a really great whole grain. Um, and if we're trying to get really healthy, this is the one you want to do it with. So, what I did was I made bar I, I toasted the barley. So, what you do is you wash the barley, then you put it into a, to a fry pan or a saute pan, and you just want to toast it. Okay. Um, and then, what you're going to do is you're going to add your stock. After you, once you get it nice and toasty, All right, you're going to add your stock the salad. to it. And then I just packed this full of vitamin. Oh, I packed this full of vegetables. Hey, chef, Gabe, you know I hate to rush you when you're cooking up this delicious stuff. We're gonna have to get you going here. That's it for the show for now. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for supporting us. Big thanks also to Mike Alexander and Ron Carter. Thanks also to our crew and especially to you out there for watching us. See you next time.